The final sedimentary process I'd like to talk about is how sediments actually get deposited on the seafloor, the process called deposition. Sediments may land on the seafloor, but they're not quite ready to make it their permanent home yet. They still may be influenced by currents or some other type of physical process, or they may be even be worked by organisms. But ultimately, sediments are deposited on the seafloor, which is their final resting place. Of course, we know eventually they'll be subducted. While on the surface of the seafloor, sediments may continue to be worked or processed. Largely, that happens as a result of organisms by animals living at the bottom of the ocean. That process by which organisms work sediments, essentially taking them in or spitting them out or creating tubes out of them or creating homes out of those sediments or altering them chemically, the process is called bioturbation. Of course, the activities of these bottom-dwelling organisms, which are called benthic organisms, can influence how quickly sediments are deposited and the kinds of things or the kinds of sediments that they actually even are because those organisms, those benthic organisms, can actually work sediments and remove carbon and further alter and transform sediments on the seafloor. So bioturbation is an important process. As I mentioned earlier as well, diagenesis, the process by which, um, let's start that all over. The final, the final sedimentary process I want to talk about is deposition. How sediments get to the seafloor and remain there in place. Well, as a sediment gets to the very bottom of the world ocean, it may be still kicked around a bit by currents and other kinds of activities, so it may not quite be ready to be deposited on the ocean just yet. A number of things can happen as those sediments are deposited on the seafloor. One thing that can happen is that they can be worked over by biological activities. Organisms living at the bottom of the ocean, what we call the benthos or benthic organisms, use sediments either for food or for creating tubes or houses and those kinds of things. And collectively those biological activities are called bioturbation. Here's an illustration of bioturbation processes on the seafloor. Worms and clams and different kinds of shrimps and other kinds of organisms living on the seafloor may actually grab sediments that are suspended in the water column. They may bury themselves in the sediments. They may kick new sediments out as they create their burrows. They may really mix up the sediments in a sense and essentially smearing the sedimentary record. So as sediments are being deposited by particular processes, whether they're being deposited because there's a lot of activity going on to create them or because certain processes are causing them to sink faster. An important part of what happens to sediments are the biological activities or bioturbation. Eventually these sediments become buried and out of reach of the organisms. At that time they become part of the permanent sedimentary record. You might want to think of this something like the long-term memory of the ocean, whereas the initial layering or initial depositing of sediments is kind of like short-term memory. All the kinds of things that happens, what really gets remembered. As I've said before, as those sediments are both subject to biological activity and as they are put under greater pressure and as they're put under different chemical environment, they undergo a chemical transformation called diagenesis. So sediments can be compacted, their oxygen can be removed, they may be broken down by microbes, all these different things can kind of happen. And those chemical transformations and figuring out what they are and how they alter the nature of sediments is an important part of the process because remember we're trying to figure out where these sediments came from, how they were created, how they got into the ocean, how they got down to the seafloor, and if somebody's mucking that up so to speak, both biologically and chemically, well, we need to know how much those sediments are being altered once they're deposited on the seafloor so we can again make inferences about Earth's climate and about conditions in the world ocean that led to the eventual deposition of those sediments. Well, finally, sediments may be turned into rock. And when those loose consolidated fragments, so sand, 
pushed together or silt or muds or all these things pushed together and compressed under really high pressure when they become rock we call that process lithification sandstones a great example of lithified sediments and limestone um, other kinds of rocks sedimentary rocks that are actually rocks not the sediments themselves are good examples of that process of lithification turning sediments into rocks and of course as I've said before eventually that sedimentary rock through the action of plate tectonics gets subducted in a subduction zone where it gets melted and that material is then eventually spewed out back on the surface of the earth and the whole thing starts all over again well here's an example that I want to leave you with a little journey to the seafloor in Banfield Strait it's off the uh, coast of Vancouver Island Banfield Marine Station is a place where I spent six weeks teaching a marine science course and we had the opportunity to use a remotely operated vehicle and take a visit down to 127 meters so 300 feet or so here you see lots of krill you see lots of organic matter in the water you see some jellies um, here we have a ratfish and we're not trying to kill it with our laser beams these laser lights are actually help us uh, determine the size of different features here are all the different kinds of burrows of different kinds of organisms you can see all this rich organic mud this is really an organic productive environment so it's uh, a lot different than what you're going to see way out in the middle of the ocean but you see all the particles you see all the different kinds of animal plankton or zooplankton and the krill and the copepods and these ratfish that hover around on the bottom uh, and feed on various organisms and stir up the mud as well so there's a little journey to the bottom of the ocean off Vancouver Island in Canada well if you want to learn more or do some a few more activities related to this chapter I suggest you check out the end of chapter materials in chapter 5 of course the, the textbook website has some great resources for you and hey why not watch the day after tomorrow and re-familiarize yourself with some of the things that go on in that movie it's a great lesson in oceanography believe it or not because they talk a lot about oceanography and they talk about some things that we'll cover a little bit later on in the semester such as a global conveyor belt but it's a great movie to watch and now you have a great excuse to watch it because hey you're studying for an exam right watching the day after tomorrow well I hope you enjoyed this lecture it's a little bit longer than our other ones so if you miss something go back and watch it again and of course if you have any questions please feel free to contact me email me or text me. Have a great day.